Okay, for today, let's talk about Cybersecurity Sorcery Cube. This is Chapter 2 of the Cybersecurity Essentials course uh, by, by our Cisco Networking Academy. My name is Robert Doyle, and I will be doing this lecture for you. Uh, just one word that uh, this is a pretty generic uh, chapter, so you should be able to use it in, in any kind of like security course or any other uh, course that uh, you want to teach your class about uh, by the CIA, try out, and those type of things. Okay, as you can tell from here, it's going to cover uh, uh, the cybersecurity sorcery cube, uh, the CIA triad, uh, uh, the states of data, cybersecurity countermeasures, and IT security management framework. So it's going to be quite a bit, so just hang in there as we go through this. The cybersecurity sorcery cube. Okay, what this basically means is it's uh, three dimensions of security, I guess, and it's called the CIA, which is confidentiality, integration, and availability. Uh, they're the principles of security. Uh, they identify the goals and how to protect uh, um, you in the in the cyber world, and it, it's it's made of three principles. Then you have have uh, the states of data, which is uh, the data at risk in storage, in transit, or in process. So somewhere in here is where you can get your data stolen if it's at risk as it's moving through the internet and even while it's being processed right there with your credit card or your little phone as you put it over the device you're doing it with. Cybersecurity safeguards, there's three dimensions of it. Uh, you have information state, countermeasures, and security principles. Technology has a big role to play with this depending on how sm smart your device is as you just uh, just recently found out about the Intel flaws in their chips that allow hackers to get into Intel processing computer. Policies and practices are probably one of the biggest things. A lot of companies do not have policies in place for in, for uh, problems. What if people get hacked in your organization? What happens? What happens if something gets stolen? And probably the biggest flaw of any security issue would be people. People. I would have to say cause the majority of the problems. The passwords are too easy, they're too light, they don't pay attention, they write down too much stuff, they don't shred information, and it just goes from there. And that's why uh, this is going to be very important as you go through and when you learn about how the information goes through the internet and how it interacts with other devices. The CIA triad. The CIA triad confidentiality is the first one. The principles of confidentiality is to kind of like keep things confidential, train employees how to use it for the best safeguard, and I think the biggest thing here would be remember what is private and what is public. Private is exactly what it sounds like. It does not go outside, should not go outside. Public is public. Public, I would have to say, would be uh, like Facebook, Twitter, those are more public. Private would be your own company's intranet or SharePoint for internal use. And protect, protecting your data would be another thing. A lot of companies have so much information, telephone, sensitive information. Hospitals are having a big issue right now because they are trying to make themselves secure, but yet be able to access patient records anywhere they're at. You're, you're going to see probably like little devices that will have all of your information on it. You carry it with you. That way, when you go to a hospital, they don't ask you, do you have your medical records? You have everything on a chip, good and bad, chip good chip bad because everything is on the chip. So just remember that as we do this. Access control, it's called AAA authentication, authentication, authorization, and accounting. Typically when you log in, you log in with a username and password. That's only one step application. What you need to know for authentication is you need to know something you know, something you have, and something you are. These are three different types of authentication that if you apply all three of them, it makes it harder for people to steal information from a company or your own organization or school. Confidentiality also uh, is also backed, I guess, by the government. Uh, for legal standpoints, here's all the acts that they came out with. Uh, uh, payment credit card industry standards, Fair Credit Report Act. These are all different types of laws in, in legal issues that help you protect yourself from it. But remember, 
as I mentioned earlier, one of the big things is companies need to have their own policies and procedures in place for things that happen. Integrity would be next. Principles of data integrity means uh, is it accurate, consistent, trustworthy? Uh, you know, like fake news would not fall into this category. In other terms, the quality of it and also the method that it is being controlled. Is it validated? Is it checked? Uh, like I said, this is how a lot of fake news gets through because it is not validated or checked in, in check for consistency. The need of data integrity. You need to make sure something is real. As you go higher into education, you have to have uh, a legitimate site. You cannot use Wikipedia. Is. You have to use a, a, what are called scholarly uh, 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 citations or sites. Something. And of course we have integrity checks. This is just a check uh, to, uh, to verify what you download is, is correct. Typically, typically they use a hash function which is that big string of characters you do. When you download a file you copy those characters and if you're interested, if you got the original file, you would run those characters through a hash function and it would, t and it would tell you, or I mean, so you would run the data through a hash function and you should get that same string of numbers back. If they're different, that means something has changed within the data that you've downloaded or somebody's changed it without telling you. Availability is the third part. How available it is that this is probably the most vulnerable area of it. This is for like cyber attack. Uh, you have system failures. Do you have backup? What happens if you have critical loss of information? Uh, a lot of you want to try to get rid of single points of failure, which means if one part fails, you have other things that can pick up the slack. Uh, provide crossover. Make sure you have fault detection. And also, to make sure that you implement equipment maintenance, updates to OS, always test, plan for disasters, implement new technology, and monitor. I know people don't like doing it, but you should always do your uh, uh, your system updates. Typically, the majority of all system updates are security related, or they are fixing what are called zero day attacks, which means they they are known attacks by the manufacturer, and they're trying to fix them as soon as they can. And they're called zero day because they are happening right then and there, zero now. Okay, next let's go into the state of data. States of data, we have uh, data at risk. This is basically just data on a hard drive, central network, on a directly attached device. And probably the best example would be your flash drive. It is just sitting there resting on your device until it needs to be called. Also, too, you can have RAID devices. Uh, you can have network attached storage or NAS, or you could have, or you could have storage area networks, which is SANS. These are typically like Google Drives, those kind of things like that, Microsoft, uh, OneDrive, and those things. Now, data in transit is a little different. This is where it, it is now being transmitted between devices. So uh, you can use things such as sneaker net, wired network, wireless network, to transfer information back and forth, movable type devices. Protecting data confidentiality is part of it the integrity and also the availability of it. Make sure that it's get it, you're getting it from an authorized devices. Criminals can't intercept it or can intercept it and it can be captured, saved, or still in transit. In transit is typically when it is stolen via wireless or via hacked into systems. Data in process means that it is being uh, computed, computed, modified, or outputted. So here's where you would get People stealing, like uh, they would do dumpster diving, diving into dumpsters, grabbing information, uh, uploading files is would be in progress, uh, potential threats to integrity, also data modifications, um, processes like encoding, decoding. This is all where the data is in process and something is happening into it. But here's where you have to be careful of lockdown, interceptions, and your devices being hacked within um, the processing state. Now let's talk about the cybersecurity countermeasures. These are ways that you can hopefully defeat some of these things. Software-based technology safeguards. These are basically um, ways that you can prevent by having 
um, computer software type things, uh, removable devices, uh, firewalls, <coughs> excuse me, um, have organizations scan devices before they come in, uh, uh, make sure people understand the value of what they're doing within a given software application. Hardware technology next would be like a firewall, uh, actual firewalls or ASA or like PIX firewalls. These are physical devices that help protect you like intrusion protection uh, or uh, I'm sorry, a preventive systems or cocktail filter. This one will help you incoming and outgoing of information on it. Now here are some network based technologies you can do to safeguard. A lot of people, and I also use these personally, I use the VPN to help secure myself, hide myself. I'm not hiding myself because I'm doing something illegal. I'm hiding myself for people trying to do something illegal to me. So just remember that point when you think about that. Then you can also do what are, what are called access controls. These are where you can actually come in and you want to make sure that it keeps everything up to date automatically on your system, antiviruses, operating system updates are installed and so forth. And of course wireless access point security. Uh, you want to make sure that your device is in encrypted so people can't get into it. Because you have to remember, if a crime is committed on your wireless device, you're basically guilty until you can prove that you did not allow that person to do whatever they did on your wireless device. It's kind of the opposite of what you would think it would be. So that's why you want to be very careful that your wireless device is secure. And the majority of all the VPNs now will also secure wireless as well. So it just makes sure that when it transmits through the air that it is encrypted and not just open because you cannot say that this air is mine. There is no really, all air is public domain, so to speak. So that's why you got to be very careful when you do wireless transactions. And to give you an example here, my home computer, I, I have wireless, but the computer that I do all my transit transactions on, I have it cabled to my modem. That way there is no information flying through the air that is kind of personal to myself or financially based. Cloud-based technologies, e, this is what's going to be coming around and I don't like it personally, but you're going to see what are called uh, the software as a service. This is going to be what's going to happen at Microsoft's office, I believe. It's going to be, you're going to pay for a subscription and it's going to be kind of like a Google Chrome type environment. Everything will be online. Infrastructure, everything. This is where you would do uh, you would do virtualization. You would host uh, virtualized machines, uh, hardware, software, server components, and then of course you have uh, virtual security appliances. These are just like the hardware appliances, but these are for uh, for your virtual machines you are making, such as VMware machines or virtual box machines or uh, the other types of like virtual wares that are out there that that you're going to be seeing a lot more of in organizations and everything. Going out to the cloud in my opinion is dangerous because it is in the cloud. It, it, it's just out there and you have to trust the people that are supporting your cloud and you have to trust that they know what they're doing and, and that they are like abiding by these rules of protection and countermeasure and security. Okay, last thing here for this is probably the most important. It's going to be the implementing of security and education. That's why I'm making a whole series of these uh, computer lectures and PowerPoints because beyond my class, I want the public to actually know too that you need to be aware, uh, tie security to job environments, conduct person, person training, complete online courses, and be aware. I go around and I do lectures to organizations, uh, to schools, to other classes, to the university, to organizations, uh, banking. So if you are interested, I can come to your organization and I can talk to them about securing. I have a full hour or half hour type, I guess, lecture thing, handouts, just to keep people safe. I don't charge anything for these. These are mostly just for, for like awareness of training and to keep your kids and family safe at the same time. Okay, policies and procedures, big one again, you're going to see there's going to probably be a big job market for people that can do policies and procedures and do quality quality assurance and compliance because if somebody gets hacked, what are the standards, what are the guidelines, what are the procedures? What happens if you get uh, hacked? What standards do you have? What is the uh, I guess chain of command guidelines and what are you? What are your legal things? If you don't have any 
procedures and policies in place, it's very hard to prosecute anybody because you do not have anything that says what they did was illegal. So if you work for a company, their policy should be open for you to review. And uh, the majority of uh, places that I worked have those in place. If they don't, you want to really push them to do it for your sake and their sake as well. And IT security management framework. This is kind of like what we were talking about earlier. These people help with, with creating these things. One is the ISO model. This is uh, the International Organization of Standards, the International Elect Technical Commission. These people are the ones that help provide the framework to uh, make the policies and procedures and to help organizations uh, you maintain what they need to know as well. Here are some other things that they apply. You, uh, you may have seen these policies that are at their ISO 2700 standards. Uh, these were from 2005 to 2013 and these are basically risk assessment, security policies, organization and information security, asset management, human resources, physical and environmental security. This whole ring here is all part of uh, network security. Your organization should have something in each one of these blocks, compliance, um, access controls. So if you have the circle, you, you are not 100% safe because there is no such thing as 100% safe. If any company says they are, they're lying. This would just help you better protect yourself for the future and hopefully not be hacked as bad as you could have if you don't have this in place. They also go through uh, primary sections. You can actually come through here and they have a full uh, checklist that you can go through and you can check to see what you're missing. These are the sections of it. Uh, you can download this just by googling these two uh, framework and objective list and you can check mark. Uh, you can read what each one of these objectives are and you can see if your company abides by it or not. Just another way of checking to see what's happening. Also, too, they have uh, what you can do with, with uh, the state of data. So uh, how would the group and the organization be responsible for the data? Uh, create a security group program. And, and, and data entry people are responsible during the process and hardware and service support. This basically means keep your people and keep your information current, trained, and make sure they know what they are doing when they are doing it. Any any lapse of judgment can compromise data. These are just some more, I guess you would call safeguard models. Like I said, just Google these type things, and this will be for like upper management establishes a policy specializing the protection of all data coming in or out of the organization. Just These are just uh, examples of what you can do to help better safeguard your organization and your company. And with that being said, uh, like I said, there was a lot of information in this chapter. Um, I tried to try to make it as brief as possible, but keep it in English so you could understand it. So this kind of covered the dimension of the cybersecurity sorcery cube, uh, the triad, the uh, CIA, and other resources like that. Um, like I said, this I'm just scratching the tip of the iceberg here when it comes to integrity, uh, you know, keeping things safe. Um, as I go through the higher chapters, we will cover other topics in more detail. But uh, this concludes this chapter. And thank you so much. And please have a nice day.